So now I'm recording. Hello, everyone. Okay, now we are on the uh, uh, our Markdown meetup. So we have prepared a presentation for you. So I guess you can see my computer now. Okay. So the idea of today is to introduce you into our markdown and then also after the introduction to give some more ideas on how we can customize our markdown and what other things we can do on it. So quite quickly, we will do an intro, so a bit of what is our markdown, what can it be used for, which are the advantages. And then also we will, as I said, like go a bit a little bit further and try to see, okay, how can we make tables nice, nicer? How can we choose the styles? Also, how can we, for example, have different features as tab sections? And then we will go a little bit further and learn a bit about automated reporting. So yeah, we will discuss a bit more later what this is about, but there are ways of embedding, not only having R code on chunks, but also having R codes our code inside the text and run that code and show the output also in the text for those of you who already know a bit what I'm talking about. But for those of you, of you who didn't understand the word, we will go through it. Um, and then we will like do an introduction on present, our presentation. So different kinds of presentations that we also can do with our markdown. Uh, so part of this um, presentation has been based in another meetup from our ladies from the ch chapter in Oslo. And um, yeah, it was a it's a very nice, we have seen it also on the YouTube channels from our ladies global. So um, yeah, I thought it was really good. So I took some ideas from them and I wanted to thank them. Um, so first, okay like a brief introduction of what is R Markdown and what is the difference between R Markdown and, I don't know, Word or any other way of writing uh, text. So R Markdown, so Markdown in general is just plain text. That, that means that it's just text written in, a, in an editor and I can easily open this text using any text editor like a Notepad or the simplest text editor on a Windows machine. So even if people don't have R or if people don't have any special uh, software, they can also still see, they can still see what we have been written. And that's good. I mean, especially when, for example, I don't know, your R markdown will not work on other com others' computer because maybe they didn't install the package or they have problem, prob problems and cannot solve them, they will still be available to see what you have written because this is just text. Um, and in this text, there are some sp special characters that will be indicating, okay, uh, this is um, maybe italics, this is maybe a title, and we will use just characters in plain text to um, also create the format of our text. Then our markdown is just like a special case of markdown. We will be using um, markdowns, markdown syntax, but we will be using markdown syntax in R, and that will allow us also to run R code. So we will have the R code in a normal markdown, that R code will be just shown as code, but since we will be working with R Markdown, we will be able to run that code and to show the output of the code or the plots that are created with our code. And that has the advantage that then we can just merge. So we don't have to have our plots and then export the plots and save it like an image and then start creating our Markdown on our, or our report and then importing the images. We can have everything into only one file. Um, yeah, and this is really good, especially if you want to share not only, I mean, if you were to share your results, it's easier for you, but if you want to share your results and how you did it, it's also good for the people receiving the R Markdown because they have the code there and they will also be able to run. So actually, uh, how does R Markdown work? 
So actually you have your R Markdown file into, in, in your R Studio probably, and then what need, so you will need this, this file and this will produce a Markdown file that you will not see, but it's just what is happening there and it's what is happening when you just need. And then this Markdown file can be converted in different formats. It can be converted, converted to an HTML file, it can be converted to a um, Word file or to a PDF file. Um, and so usually what changes when you change which output you want is this part here, like the Pandoc, which is the, the part of, of the code that is producing the final output, right? And then, so there are different things that you can do when you have different outputs. We can also discuss that um, a bit later, but for example, our Markdown works better and with more features when you need to an, to an HTML, when you create an, an HTML file, so a file, file that you can open in your internet browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or Firefox. It can also create, create PDFs. To create PDF, it will, it will use LaTeX, so you will have to have LaTeX installed and then it might be a bit more tricky at the beginning to make it run. But once it runs, it's easier, but then you have to be aware that, for example, we are going to create tab sections and those tab se sections will be shown in an HTML, but of course will not be shown in a PDF file. Well, and it can also be, uh, yeah, it can also produce other documents such as Word documents and each document has like its own tricks, but the more straightforward is also, is always producing a, an HTML file. So yeah, R Markdown or Markdown in general is just text. And um, then this different, so uh, the knit, the knitting part, and then the Pandoc will take care of converting that, that text in either an HTML file or a PDF file. But as we said, that makes it easier to share with people and people don't have to have any special um, yeah, software. If you try, for example, open a Word document with any text editor, you will just see like uh, impossible to understand uh, characters that make no sense. But with a R markdown, everyone will be able at least to see what you have been, what you have written. And if they have R, they will be also be able to run your code and to reproduce your um, your analysis. And um, yeah, so. This is how our markdown looks looks like. You just go to file. So for you that haven't seen uh, any of that yet, so you just go to file, new file, and then you just choose open an R markdown. And then I just will say this is a test, and I will choose the HTML, and then I already have here a new document. And it comes with a template that is useful to start with. And this, te this template, so it's already an R Markdown file and it has three elements. The first part is the YAML that will help us also to decide, for example, which output do we want. So it's everything that is going to decide how the neat knitting part and how the Pandoc part will work. So that will be, for example, to decide which type of out to, out, output do we want. And then we have two other sections. So just simple text, and Divi will explain a bit more about how to create the simple text, and then the code chunks where we are going to write the R code. So I guess, yeah, for now, it's better to start trying a bit and seeing how it looks like. So Nivia has prepared already some demo to show you. So I will quickly go back to Zoom and share my computer and share my screen. Sorry, it takes me some time to find where everything is on the computer. All good. <laughs> so, stop sharing. Yeah, there. <laughs> I also need a minute to actually send you the link. Um, in the meantime, welcome to um, Gabby and I see Flavio is joining as well. So I'm first going to be sharing um, a file here in our chat. 
um, to all of you and that's an HTML and in our demo we are going to try and create a similar HTML. Um, so you can find it. Um, so there's a file coming to your chats right about now. Um, seems like I can't send it. Hello, Flavio. Um, I'm so sorry. I think I can't share a file with you. That is a bit annoying. Does anyone have experience with that? I okay. don't think so. I don't even understand what the problem is. So okay, sure. that's um, that's fine. I think I'm just going to share my screen and then um, show you the HTML here. Uh, but like, I don't know what you're seeing, but uh, you should have a an option in the chat, like to send a file in there. Well, so you, there, there's a menu that says send file. So I've, I've used it before and it's worked, but I don't know, maybe maybe it's not working at the moment for some reason. Yeah, that's maybe it's what like I thought of. Yeah. Maybe like um, security. security reasons. Yep. No, that's fine as well. Okay, I'm just gonna try and share my screens and hopefully that works for the time being. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay. So um, this is an HTML document that I've created. Um, can everyone see it? Is the screen being shared? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So we start with like a header here. Ah, thank you. Uh, we start with a header here and just let's just brainstorm a bit and see what all have I done in this document. So what all do you see if I just had to, you know, do this in Word or something? Um, what are the things I would have to think about? So just put it in the chat and I could have a look at it as well. Or if someone could just read it out to me, that would be great. Uh, yeah, you'd have to think about like headers. Mm -hmm. You'd have to think about like a table of contents you have at the yeah. top there. Yeah. Font sizes. Exactly. Is that how you created this one HTML you shared with us once, Carla Julia? Um, yeah, we use this. Yeah, I have used this oh, before to share like HTML documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like notes. Okay. Um, yeah, and you see also bullets. And then, of course, there's the R code that, um, I mean, that's why we're using R Markdown, because ultimately we want to see the code either um, shown what we have here or without. And we have a table here, which is a summary table. And then, of course, we have the plot that we, we want to make. Anything else? Uh, we have references, and that's also hyperlinks. Bold, italics, again, part of font. Anything else that I'm missing? Or anything else that comes to your mind that you see here? Oh, 
Okay. In that case, I would now move on to um, the R code and the markdown in R. Um, what I thought of doing was, I don't know how many of us were at um, the Tidy Tuesday two weeks ago. Um, and um, Pavitra, who's not here today, or at least not yet, I didn't see her, um, suggested if we could have some kind of um, general pattern that we follow when we are doing Tidy Tuesdays because she doesn't know where to start, how to go about doing it. Um, and if there's just like a pattern or a template that you could follow every time. And I thought, well, let's make the template together and let's have um, just a few things in there and put it in a markdown. So this is a kind of template, but also it has all the steps that I used to make my Tidy Tuesday last week, which was this graph here. Um, I took traumatic brain injury. And um, yeah, so that's the graph, put a background image on it, um, and traumatic brain injury as a function of age. That's what you can see there. But how I made the graph is just a small part of it. So if you want to um, um, use a tidy Tuesday data set that you used in the past, or if you just want to have the template without actually having data in there, that's fine as well. If you just want to have a template of what all to have in my markdown um, without giving too much details about, oh, which data am I using, what not, you can have that as well. And worst case, you can just take the data that I'm using um, and see how that goes. I would have really loved for you to have this um, HTML file. And if I could just request one of the other co-hosts, if you could um, send this via Meetup. Um, sorry, I can't read the chats right now. Or... Can you not send us by mail, per mail? Yeah, exactly. Um, if Elisa or Kyla could just um, yeah, send Yeah, I it. will do that. So Perfect. I have Thank the, mm, yeah, I have the H HTML. Yeah. Please send it via the Meetup list. Yeah, it's the one from yesterday. And yeah, the same last one. <laughs> <laughs> not one of the earlier versions. <laughs> no, no, the last one. I have <laughs> everything organized. No. <laughs> no. And if anyone didn't get the meetup, maybe just send like a private message on here to me with your email address and then I'll forward it on just for yeah. the people who didn't get the meetup. Yeah, exactly. Link. Yeah, I think that would be me then because I didn't get the meetup. I think Gabby didn't either. Okay, Saskia, I'll definitely send it to you. I already have your email. Perfect. I'm just taking a small pause till um, get the email sorted or if everyone's fine with it, I would just continue. Yeah. You could, you could continue, I guess we okay, get the link great. when we get it. Okay. So I'm just going to introduce you to what's happening with R. Even, even if you don't have the link just yet, that's fine. We can um, start off in R and I will pause when you absolutely, absolutely need to have the link and um, you can do that then. Okay. So this is my markdown file and let's start from the very beginning. Very good place to start. Um, you can go to file. So this is your R Studio environment. I hope everyone is, um, Familiar with it? Anyone not familiar with R Studio at all? Okay, great. Um, okay. So this is your R Studio environment. Um, you can go to File, New File, and then instead of an R script, you just go to R Markdown. And here you can put in. Um, Untitled, and you can put you can put your name as the author, and you can say you want the output file to be HTML, PDF, or Word. Um, don't worry about this though. If you click HTML and then later your boss is like, "Oh, I need it to be a PDF," that's fine. You can change it within the Markdown document as well. That's really not a problem. 
Um, so basically, you go to a document. You could also make a presentation if you have some time. Um, Elisa will also show you how to make the presentation later. Um, but it's very similar. So you click on document, put in a title, um, put in who the authors are, click HTML, PDF, or Word to start with, and then just click OK. And there you have your um, new markdown file ready to go. Just one second. Instead yeah. of uh, um, sending it via Meetup, I have just created a link. If yeah. you click on that link, I have sent it to everyone on the chat. So if you click on that link, you can directly download oh, there. So that would be easier. Yeah. Thank you. And when it works. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Okay, but then I can actually wait a minute to see if everyone has the link. Um, and if everyone can click on it. If someone could just look at the chat and let me know if everything's fine, then I can proceed. So yep. far, so okay. good, I think. Okay, great. Yay, everyone has the link. Um, Okay, if anyone at any point doesn't have the link, is stuck somewhere, feel free to just give us a shout, okay? Um, all right, so this is how your untitled new document looks like. Um, I can just make this bigger for now. So you have the title that I gave it, the author, the date, and the output. And this is the part where Elisa explained we can add a lot more that would then be valid for the entire document that follows. So for example, we could put like, themes and stuff here, which Elisa would explain in detail later. Um, but this is also where I could say, I want a table of contents. I want to know what's happening there. Um, this, these are your R chunks, and this is your text. As you can see, um, depending on what the color scheme of your R studio is in general, this for me is slightly differently colored. So, you know, it starts with these three things here. And this, I'm so sorry, is like, it, it is, um, different based on if you're using an English keyboard or a German keyboard. So I'm not going to tell you where it is, but I'm going to give you a minute to just figure out on your keyboard where the symbol is. Um, and then you have the R chunks and that ends there. And then you have a markdown. Just by reading this, you find out the basics about uh, markdown and how it works. And um, yeah, and that you can knit it to then be in this case an HTML document. Um, you have the you have another R chunk here. So if you just look at what R is giving you, you have another R chunk here where you have summary for this data set called cars. And here it's telling R to import the data set cars, which is already in um, the R studio environment. Um, then you can include plots. Uh, then you can include plots. Um, and here's the name of the plot that you're including. Um, and here you have something very handy. It says if you say echo false, um, you won't print the R code that was generated to give you the plot. Um, we'll go through all of this again in detail when I take you through the document. Here we have. I'm going to pause again for a minute. Um, just to make sure everyone's up to date, if there are any um, questions, any problems, and welcome, Pavitra. Hi, Divya. Sorry, I'm late. No worries. I'm glad you could make it because you asked us a question two weeks ago and you said, um, wouldn't it be great if we had a template for Tidy Tuesdays? And so today we're making a template for Tidy Tuesdays in Markdown. <laughs> Okay. All right. So now if you look at the document that hopefully all of you have, um, you have this bit. And here, apart from just the output being HTML, I've just said table of contents. A table of contents is true. That's how you get the table of contents that you see here. Yeah. Then I move forward and I say, okay, let's make a markdown together. This is my, so this is my first level of heading. These are my second level, and you can go on to like third levels and stuff. Um, so for the first level of heading, I just, sorry, I just um, give one hash as compared to a second level of heading where I just give two, and that's the second level. And that's how you see the font changes. 
or at least the font size changes. And then I just write what I want to tell you here. Basically, I'm saying, ah, let's do the traumatic brain injury data that I worked on two weeks ago. And I'm going to show you how I did that and create a kind of template. Um, but then there's two shortcuts that I show you here. Um, and again, just to reiterate, if you have a similar data set and you want to work on your own data set, feel free to do that. The point is just to learn Markdown. Um, if not, feel free to use what I have there. Um, okay. And uh, if you want to convert an R script, an existing R script to Markdown, again, big shout out to Mo from the Oslo chapter um, and her video on YouTube. Um, she taught us how to do this. Um, and I thought it was so cool that I included it here. You can do Control Shift K on Windows or Control um, Command Shift K on um, the Mac. And then and you can just create an existing um, so I'm just gonna show you an existing um, data set that I have here. So for example, this is another tidy Tuesday data set. And like you can see, if I do control shift K, um, it asks me if I want an HTML output and I can just click on compile. Sorry, there's a uh, oh, there's an issue there, but I think I took another one then. Yeah, that one. Um, and this is definitely the wrong um, plot. This is not the plot that I finally used for my meetup. This is one of the ones that I didn't like, and you can see why in a minute. But yeah, there you have it, like my entire script as an HTML directly. And that's the plot that I obviously did not like. And now to make the plot that I did like. Um, also, if you just want to create R codes, like the ones here, you can just do Control Alt I and it'll create an R code, like the one here or like the one here. So just to give you a few shortcuts before we start off, um, we've already discussed um, what happens when we start off with Markdown. You can knit it, you have different headers and text, and you have R codes and the echo function that um, R already tells you when you open a new Markdown file. We then move on to the second step, which is like pre-processing here. And again, you can see we are already here. Ah, I created bullets here. Um, that was quite easy as well. Just put a dash and a space and then a double space or um, a double enter, but like a double space would work here at the end as well. And that's how it knows it's a different bullet. Um, here though, you probably see something interesting. I have bullets one, I mean numbered one, two, three, and then two again, because I make such mistakes. But like you see here, it's corrected it to four. And I really like this about Markdown because I I make these kind of four parts where I'm just like, oh, one, two, three, and then, oh, I forgot to add something. And then I'm just copy pasting and it just recognizes that this should be a four because it follows. And so it doesn't really matter what number you put here. It doesn't have to be the number that you actually want. It just, it recognizes that this is a numbering format and it does it correctly. Um, we then move on to the second step. So pre-processing here. Um, Okay, and here you see echo false and include false. So what's the difference? Um, anyone? Do you wanna guess what the difference would be between echo and include? Feel free to just uh, switch on your microphones or I could look at the chat again. Yeah, uh, 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 echo basically is whether or not you wanna have it printed and uh -huh. include is whether or not you want to have it run. Oh, no, that's exactly. evaluate, sorry. No, that's evaluate, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Wait, 
Uh, yeah, echo is if you want to run or not, and yeah. include is if you want to include the code itself or not. Yeah, yeah, that, that exactly. Yeah. So, um, if I was just preparing a report, I don't need um, my boss to see my entire code. I just want him to see the output. I would not include the code in that case. Um, yeah, great. Just stop me if I'm going too fast. Stop me if you need anything particularly. Now, the first thing I do when I look at data is just like the SDR command and the summary command to see what's going on there. Um, and if you see the output here, if you just see the SDR output, this looks like your standard R output. Again, if I was showing this to somebody, they'd be like, ah, oh, what is this? We don't really understand it. It's like hash, hash, dollar sign, something, something, colon, something, something, CHR, what does that mean? Um, so in comparison, with summary, I actually made a table, and you can do that in Netad as well using cable. And the summary table then looks a lot nicer. Um, you can actually make sense of this even if you're not using R that often. So just to show you the difference, if you just put a command versus if you actually use summary in a table, then you can do that within Markdown as well. Um, okay. And so I have the summary table. Um, and now you can see from the data itself, um, if I want to use age, currently this is a character. So then the next thing I would do while using tidy use the data is, what do I need to change in this data? What do I need to manipulate um, to be able to make the graph that I want to make? Um, in this case, something that automatically strikes out is um, age being a character and not a factor. Um, also, if you look at it, here, it's not ordered particularly, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, not always starting from zero, zero to four, and then seven, four to, or five to 17 or whatever, so I need to like change that as well. That's what you see me doing here, so I have group as factor, uh, sorry, age as factor, and then I have it ordered in the levels that I want it to be. And then I've removed all the NAs because there are some that don't fit any of these categories and I've just removed them um, for simplicity. Okay. And now we come to making the plot and there you see I have some italics here and some bold here. So I'm like, okay, I have three, five points, but I'm um, highlighting what I want to show you and how you do that is just, um, uh, so that's how you make it bold with just like two asterisks on both sides. Um, and that's how I'm telling you what I did. I'm like, okay, so I first made the bar graph, then I imported the picture. Um, then I use some filters from the magic package. I remove scientific annotations, and then I finally added the background image to the bar plot. Um, this is how you do italics by just adding like um, an underscore on each side of where you need to be. Um, and here, all I'm doing is telling you again, you can do echo false and include false because I don't need to show you all the packages that I used um, and run all the packages. I mean, if I run this, it's just going to be like a whole lot of lines just telling you which package I'm using, what it's updated to, and so on. And yeah, then you see my code once again. You see what I've done there. Um, and you see what I've done here. So, you know, I've even like broken my um, numbering. So I have one and two here. But then if I have all of this code and I put one again, then R may think um, I'm, I'm, I'm starting a new numbering list. Uh, I didn't want to do that, so I did three. But then again, it didn't matter if I do one and one again. Basically, it's a number. So it continued with three, four, five. Um, exactly. And then I show you the remaining steps. And finally, for references, you do this thing where you put um, square brackets for what you want to write and then um, these circular brackets for the actual link. So that's the link for the Our Ladies Oslo, and that's the link for the Markdown Definitive Guide. Um, so yeah, I 
guess that's that. Um, and so we went through, you know, our header, our um, main authors, date, table of contents, headers, first level, headers, second level, um, numbering, bullet points, um, R code, tables, R code that you want to show, that you don't want to show, code that you want to include, that you don't want to include, um, italics bold, more R code, more numbering, <laughs> uh, including a graph, uh, including a plot, and finally, how to do hyperlink references or hyperlinks in general, just adding links to your code. Um, and here you have your HTML. You can just as easily change from HTML in your code to PDF or to Word, and then you have your PDF document or your Word document. I'm just going to stop sharing for a minute to see if anyone has any questions. So thank you, Livia. <laughs> oh. Was it all okay? Is there, oh, is there anything anyone um, has questions on, is wondering what's going on, is stuck? Did everyone do something parallelly? Was it too much? So I guess, yeah, it was good, I don't know. Yeah? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Can, uh, and I was just uh, wondering that maybe it's worth mentioning that for the references, basically, if people are used, I don't know if people use LaTeX normally or not. Mm -hmm. So I do work, a lot of work with the interface of LaTeX and Mark Markdown. Uh, and basically, so I write my papers in R Markdown with uh, the Papaya, um, uh -huh. the Papaya, the Papaya yeah. library. And maybe it's just worth uh, mentioning that you can actually have the big files within uh, yeah. the document for the references so that that's yeah. ultimate. Yeah. Yeah, actually Papaya is really good if you're doing um, academic work. I know quite a few people um, who use Papaya for their articles. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that, Carmen. No, no, but, but if, at a lower level, I just, you can have the big file basically to yeah. do the references and reference in the mark down, even yeah. if you don't use Papaya, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, Papaya is just an extra tool, but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, awesome. There was. Yeah. Uh, you've been muted again, Carmen. Ah, uh, yeah, no, so I was saying that it was good that everything worked well. And, uh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, this is just like still an introduction. Um, and yeah. Hope you can play around with it somewhere and I'm going to give it back to Elisa who's going to show you some more advanced options. So um, then, yeah, I will again share my screen. Um, yeah, so there are two things um, I want to like say about also Divya what you said or, or quickly add. So um, one is that everything that Divya said and I'm having problems with it. So everything that Divya told you about like how to do um, yeah, italics, how to do add the code or not out the code, um, it's in one of these cheat sheets that are worth having a look at. So I really like the, so you go to help in R Studio cheat sheets and then Arc Markdown reference guide is one I really like. It's really clear for me, so I'm opening it right now. So here you can actually see everything that also has Divya has told you. So how to create the different headers, how to add the links, um, how to add also images that are on the computer. Also when they are not inside a plot, as Divya showed you, but just uh, inside the text. And then, at the end, there is a brief description also of these different things that you can add into the chunks to say, okay, is the chunk going to be shown? Not are the plots going to be shown or not? Uh, and here, for example, include what does it mean or eval what does it mean? Well, just for you to know that you don't have to remember um, that that is there and it's worth taking a look at it. So now I will go back to the presentation that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. Not my emails. Uh, so 
Oh. I will stop sharing the, the screen for a minute because I'm having problems with that. Uh, sorry for that. And so here. In the meantime, I'm just going to um, read out comments, response. Maybe everyone has the questions Rafaela did. Um, thank you, both of you, for the question and the quick answer. Uh, Carmen said, uh, Papaya, <laughs> Papaya is a library that helps creating nice APA confirming um, articles in our Markdown and LaTeX. Um, and she has the GitHub for it as well. Um, yeah, basically, that's that. OK. So I'm sharing the screen again. Uh, yeah. Here we are now. So yeah, we were actually on our demo. I just uh, show you, OK, where well, you can have all the information that Divya has already told you. And then there is one other thing that I want to talk with you. So actually, our, our markdown will have, will have a different behavior than the R uh, code. So actually, our markdown will not see everything, all the variable, variables that are loaded into the environment. So I will go to my R. So for example, here I have a lot of variables loaded. Well, I have no variables, but I could, for example, um, say, OK, I will define a variable. Okay. It's one. And then I can see the variable here. So if I just use that variable on the chunk, then R will not be able to see it on the environment. And that's something different to what will happen if I'm running a normal R code. So R Markdown will run in a completely clean R environment, and you will have to upload everything that you want to use and create all the variables that you want to use into the R Markdown file. It doesn't mean that you have to show that. You can, as we have just said, as Celia told you, you can just not include the chunk where you are uploading all the variables or where you are creating them, but it has to be inside the, the R markdown. Uh, so actually, whatever you have in your environment will not affect how the R markdown file behaves, how the R markdown file behaves, and that's actually something really good because then it means that your document is reproducible. Reproduce. Anyone in your anyone that has your R markdown will be and the files, of course, for example, the CSVs that are uploaded or the, the images that are used will be able to reproduce exactly your file. Um, yeah, at the beginning, I guess it's one of the pro problems most people face because you are probably used to working with R already and then you know how R and the environment works and then you start with R markdown and you start having problems and you don't understand why and that's, I think, one of the things that you have to check at first. So, am I uploading everything I need inside my, my R markdown or not? Uh, yeah. So it's a problem, but at the end, it's good practice because it allows people to reproduce what you have done. And it's like good practices as well. So one of, I will start now showing you different things that you can do to change or give some style or do some nice things also on the HTML side. So one of the first things that you can do is to add a different style. So each style will, um, yeah. Ah, sorry. One of the things that we are doing here is just adding a navigation bar. So Divya told, show you that you can have actually different number of sections and that you have can have a table of contents. That is something you have to uh, specify on the YAML, and then. You can also have different styles of, um, of navigation bars. So I will go again uh, to Divya, um, uh, yeah, to Divya file. So I have it here, and then she added already table of, of contents. But now I, I can I I can say okay, but I want a nicer table of contents, something that looks fancy or I don't know looks different. So I can use a floating table of contents. I will rerun the, so I'm creating now, which is actually a shortcut. It's like control shift 
okay so it's running and now i have the document the new document with the change i did and now i see that the table of contents is not anymore inside the document as it was before but it's on the side and it's like a floating table and i can go uh, to the different sections and that is something quite easy to do and looks really nice into the html document and it's of course something that worth is worth doing in, a, in an html document not so much in a that not in a pdf document um yeah and then there is another thing that i find really interesting and useful talking about sections that here you see in your so in your script there are there is this symbol that i guess you can see here of these lines and if you do that you can see all the sections of your document and i don't know for me that's really handy when you start having like a really long uh, document and okay you want to change something somewhere so this allows you to go to each of the of of the parts of your document and that this also works with sections in a normal r um, script not only in on R markdown so yeah i mean we can talk later how to create the yeah the, the you have to create the sections into the r script and in the r markdown will be just the sections that you are defining with the uh, yeah in, the, in your titles so that's one thing that i find like interesting the other thing are the uh, customized styles so there are some styles that you can change and that come with um with our markdown and are really easy to change so there are different themes you can use here you see a list of the themes uh, that you can use and it will that will change for example as you can see here the color of the navigation bar uh, the navigation bar it will change with uh, font you are using um and yeah and how things are displayed in into your final html and this will also work um yeah for pdfs and then the highlight it's another um parameter that you can specify and this will change how the code is shown so the colors that are used in into the inside the chunks so again i don't know we can um choose one theme and one color uh, i will let you vote but that will take some time so i will just I don't know, choose paper and tango. Um, so let's see how this works here. Um, I like. So we'll see right now. Um, how the new file looks like how the new html looks like so it's creating so we see now the colors look different so this is not so much different from the default but it's still a bit different and then if we go to the code we also see that the code has different colors and then you can play with this combination to see okay which one you like the most um, and I mean, we are not going to go into detail now, but if you would want to create a new and different theme with new colors and new yeah, um, features, then you will have to use a CSS um, style file. We are not going to go into that. You can just at the end, okay, Google, okay, CSS, Markdown, style file, and you will have some information. Um, another thing that I find really nice and also really easy to do is to get tab sections. That's something that looks fancy when you have an HTML and it's also very, very easy to, to get. So actually, as you see here, you just have to, you will add on the, on, on the, on one of the levels, okay, this will be a tab set and then all the levels that are under that level will be a tab. So we can also try it um, with the file that Tivia sent. So for example, with the references, we can say, okay, uh, this will be tab. So I just have to copy this tab set here. So actually this goes here. And then I will need it. So, um, yeah so i will uh, yeah and then i will say okay 
this is one tab and then this is another and then i can say okay here is for example reference um oslo and this will be uh, reference book and then i will run it again and let's see what happens um, it's running that's good that's already good <laughs> um text a little bit okay here we have so we have the same style um yeah and here we have our tab section so reference oslo shows the first link and then reference book shows the second link. um yeah and then so this is like these two things we saw it's just for styling then another thing is that okay we saw right now that you can have code into, a, into the chunks, but you can also have code outside the chunks, mixing the codes, mixing code with the text. And then there are two ways in which you can include the code. So the first way is, the, the, is how it's shown here. So the first code, you see this is just the, yeah, the, the code with the, ah, uh, now I don't, it's in the tip of my mouth, how do you call this? Um, yeah, the symbol here. Maybe someone can help me in the chat. <laughs> it's called a back tick. Back ticks, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. So, actually, if you put the back tick and direct to your code, this code will be shown in the middle of, your, of the text. But if you add R before your code, then the code will be run and you will see the output. For example, in this example, here I will see in my code unique of the injury mechanisms, but in the second um, uh, call, in the second example I will um, see ex like the output of of the of the of the code. So I will see actually what is written inside the variable. So we can also try. Let's try both of it. So I will go again to R. I will see okay where. Where was that Divya uploaded um, this? So here, for example, I can see, okay, I will run, I will run um, a unique um, TBIH dollar sign. Um, and that was, I, told that I have it here in case I forget. So injury mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, so that actually, if this is not well written, that won't be a problem because it's actually only going to show this code. And then here I can say the injury mechanism. And now I, I will run the code. So I will just copy this. In order to run it, I will just say, okay, run it using R. And then I expect to see actually the list of injury mechanisms. Let's see, this is on live, this is live coding, so it can fail. Um, so far, it seems to be working. Let's see. Okay, so let's see where we just added this, so it was here. So actually, you can see here, okay, I will run unique, this looks like code, H mechanisms, but then in the second part, I say, okay, the injury mechanisms, okay, there is a typo here, R, and then motor vehicle crashes, an unintentional falls, uh, unintentionally stuck by or against an object, etc. So actually, I'm, I'm just, looking at the output of this of this code um, and I'm also having it formatted like, like the text and that's I find really useful um, especially for what we are going to see next with, which is like the automated reporting so um, what are automated reportings so um, the idea of automated reporting is that you will have an R markdown file that you will be able to run with different data sets. Uh, and then 
it will be, for example, if you are working with um, weather data and you want to show, okay, um, an apps like you want to show and um, how was the weather in one year or how was the weather this year, you will run some analysis. You will calculate, for for example, the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature, maybe the mean temperature during summer and the mean temperature during winter, and you will have to do that for every year. And using automated reporting, you will, you will be able to have only one R markdown file and then run that same markdown file with different data. Um, and how do you do that? So actually you have to include um, on the, in the YAML um, one new thing, which are the para, params or parameters that you are going to uh, feed into into the R markdown, and this all what you are going to, what all what you are going to put here will be available for R markdown when it's needed. So it will be in the environment that R markdown uses, where it looks for the variables. And um, so I will show you quickly, for example, with Divya's file. So I will close this so it's bigger. So for example. Divya has been um, uploaded her code here. So I can say, okay, I don't want it to upload it here. I want um, to upload it on the params. That is something I can also change. So I, what I will do is I will copy this. I will just comment it in case nothing works. Um, and then I will just say, okay. Um, and here, yeah. Um, something um, yeah here in the YAML you have to be careful with the um, indentation because that changes um, that changes the behavior so it might not work if the indentation is wrong and here you have to see you have to say okay this is an R code so that is something I show with um, this exclamation mark uh, and then there is something that is you have to take into account. So the um, actually params, I have my cheat sheet here. Um, yeah. So actually params will be a list, right? Of all the different parameters that I will be inputting into R. And since I'm inputting the variable that Divya called um, TBIH, I will just use this also as um, the name here. So I will say, okay, TVIH will be, um, yeah, will be something that is uploaded running R. So because for example, read R, uh, read CSV is an R code. Here I could also put just one or two or three um, without the R exclamation because it has no code, it will be just be assigned to the, to the TVIH. So the thing is that, okay, this looks right. I could run it, this won't work because then all the, parameter, all the parameters are inputted in a list that is called params. So it's like there will be a new variable created that it's called params, which will be a list including all the params I, I just include here. For example, I can say, I don't know, a test, C and just one. And then I will need for, to, to use uh, Divya's, um, Divya's code. I will have to say, okay, this is param. Um, this is params. Uh, and then it's a list, so it's, a, I, it's TBIH. Yeah. And then I will uncomment this. And now we'll see what happens. Again, it can fail. <laughs> so far it's running. So one more second. Yeah. So this will actually look, look exactly as what Divya made. The only difference is that, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, there are no differences because the, the chunk where Divya uploaded the data was not shown. So actually it's not shown that now we are not uploading, but we are just extracting one variable from the list. Um, and we could, for example, say uh, here, 
is variable a. And then I can include this code um, R, dollar sign A, and this should be um, the other parameter that I shall, I was test, not A. So the other parameter that I just defined. Let's try that. I mean, so far I haven't tried everything I showed you. I haven't tried this. So yeah, but still it's fun. <laughs> um, so just one more second again. Uh, so actually, um, we have to look where did I add that? It was just, yeah, before the first thing I would do. Um, yeah, well, I'm not finding it, but it probably somewhere. It's just in pre-processing, so it should be here. Yeah, here. I mean, I just put it in a very silly place. But now here is, this is variable A, which is a variable actually test from, again, a typo that's very common. When I write uh, quickly, params is one. And actually, this one is not something I wrote there, but it's something coming from the parameters I defined at the beginning. Um, so, so far, very nice, but actually we are not doing something different to what we usually do with R Markdown. We are just defining things somewhere else instead of inside the R Markdown file. So what I want to show you quickly is um, what can we do with this? So I created an R, um, so I created an R code where I actually just create um, two groups. So to variables that are called group, I I'm just saving it uh, into different R data files. So one R data is called group one, the other one is called group two. Uh, and actually I'm just going to run one R markdown. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, knit, knit and render one R markdown that I already have, this automatic test saying that the parameters that are going to be inputted in this file are not anymore going to be defined inside the file, but are going to be an input from this, um, from this function. And actually, I'm running a loop, so I will be um, uh, creating as many files as um, I can create into, yeah, as I have into this um, for loop. Um, are there any questions right now? Because I have been talking for a while and I want to, I feel it's a bit, um, yeah. I have been talking for a while and I want to know if there are questions. I'm going to show a bit more about this. Um, but everything is going okay. Feel free to write in the chat at any point. We have an yeah. eye on it, don't worry. Okay. Now the thing is that I I I'm, I mean, I know I have been talking for a couple of minutes already, and I have no feedback, so I cannot mostly see people. So it's like I need some. Yeah, I need to stop at some point. Okay, to see. Okay, thanks. To see if they are there. Otherwise, I just see names on the screen. Okay, cool. Then I just want to show finish what we have started. So actually using this R Markdown render function, I'm going to render the same R Markdown file with different parameters. Uh, and then I'm saying, okay, how the output file will be named, and it will be named, so I shall say server analysis group, I, so that each file has a different name and PDF. And I will quickly show you, I probably have it here, so the R Markdown I use for this is a very simple, simple template. So where I see, for example, the, it has a default uh, param, a parameter, so the default parameter is group equals one. And actually what it does, it just says, okay, in this report we are analyzing, and I'm saying which I'm analyzing, just including some R code inside the text. But then I'm just loading a different file here because I'm loading the file that is called group um, underscore file number, which is going inside here. And as you can see, I mean, this params is again a list. I am unpacking the group number uh, into the variable file. I could, I could put 
all this directly here with the CES file, but for me, I mean, for my organization, I like when I need to have like a list with a lot of things to kind of unpack the things I'm going to use. And then I just calculate some summary statistics for each group, for example, the mean. So actually this variable group that we could uh, load, probably, if I'm in the right, uh, well, I can just show you here. So each group has um, like age, I just created that data, so it's fake data, but has like some age, some weight, and then where they come from, and some cities where they come from. So actually what I'm doing in the, in the markdown here is just saying, okay, the mean weight, um, uh, yeah, in the group actually, the mean weight in the group is, and then I'm just running a code to say, okay, I just want the mean of the weight, and the mean age is, and again, I'm running um, the mean. And then I'm just, as we said with the, um, yeah, with the, as, as we did in the, um, the in DDS file, now instead of having like the unique causes of, um, of yeah, of these uh, problems, um, we are just having like the, uh, I hate Windows for these things. Um, we are just having here like the cities the participants come from. And then I'm actually not going to run the, um, the R markdown from here because I don't want it to run it actually from this file. I just wanted to run it from this loop. So let's see. Um, and it will actually, in this case, it will create a PDF. So um, this is different to what we did before because now I'm here in output. I'm, I don't have HTML document, I have PDF document. So I will be creating two different PDF documents, one for each group. So let's see, uh, let's see if this has been run. So now it's running. So it takes a while and then I have to go to the, um, yeah, uh, to the directory where this is running, which is actually this directory. That's why it couldn't change because it's already in this directory. So I will go to the directory and I see, okay, I have these two files created. So the second file is still being created because of the time, but the first is already there. Let's see. Um, no, it's still, it takes a while. So if you have many, you have to let it run for a while. And my computer yeah, is getting slower, but at least now, now we have both of them. I'm, I'm just looking at the time with the, when the um, document was created. So I can open the PDF and see that, um, so it's actually our markdown, automated reports, and the mean weight is 69, and the mean age is 36, and the participants come from Freiburg, Heidelberg, Frankfurt. Um, and then the number two is very similar, but now the mean, is, uh, the mean weight is 44, and the participants come from other cities. Uh, cool. So, um, going back to the presentation. So, I mean, there are a lot of things you can do with this automated reports. It can really save time. Um, okay. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you today are two ways of um, creating presentations using our markdown. The first one is quite easy and works really similar to, mark to markdown. is our presentations. And it's quite easy, you just have to go to R, again, file, new file, and here you just directly go to R presentation and as we, well, you, I, we have to create, so let's create one, test, uh, and so it's creating one somewhere, yeah, here it is. Uh, I want to continue, so I don't care. Um, something is happening there. Mm, but my presentation is still here, which is important. So actually what, what is nice about this is that it's really very similar to our markdown. To go from one, like to create different slides, you just have to put this uh, equals, this line of equals, and then you have your different slides. Um, and other nice thing is that with RStudio, you have like a viewer right on, on, on RStudio on the right, and then you can just 
see how it will look like. And this is again um, this uh, template where you have okay, how can I add links? The bullets look right like Markdown. Um, then to add the title, you have to put the title be, um, before the, the line of equal signs. You can add in our add chunks. And everything that works in our markdown will also work here. And this will um, create an HTML. So let's see, I think it's here. You have to save as web page and then it will save it here. Let's save it, save. And it will, I will go back here. No, this is a file. Um, I have so many tests. Um, and as you see, I mean, it's, it looks really nice and yeah, it's really simple to create. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So this is one way of creating presentations, as you see, it's really straightforward. And the other one, if I can go back to my... Uh, I have problems because I'm, um, let's see if I can do this, yeah. So we are back here, we are so far here. Yeah, and then another way of, um, of creating presentations is doing, many people are right now using sharing, sharing and presentations, and these have like um, some more features. Uh, you have to install a package to use this, so you have to install the package in Sharingan. You can either install it from GitHub or it's already in Cram, so you can install it as any other package. And then, to, I mean, for, at least for me, the first, whenever I create the first, um, uh, yeah, the first file or first document in, on, on R or on anything, it's much easier to work from a template than just to start from zero, like from scratch. So actually, you can also create a template. You go to File, New File, R Markdown from Template Mission Presentation. Let's do that. So I will just go File, New File. Here, I just have to go to R Markdown. And here is something that we didn't see before, but here you have from template, and it's quite interesting because, I mean, you have a lot of templates, even for journals, I don't know, biometric journal article, mm, Frontiers journal article, you can even choose, choose the, the journal, PNAS, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, where it's initial presentation. So let's see, okay. So this has, again, a YAML that is quite complex, but then many things look like, um, again, look like our markdown. And to go from one slide to the other, so you just have these uh, three scores here, and this, then you go from one slide to the other. And then if you want to, what, what is nice, nice also is that here you can just say, okay, I will show this first, and then this second part will appear, and then this last part will appear with the two, uh, the two scores. So we can also try meeting this. This, this is, um, so again, Sharingan, Sharingan um, presentation. Is it, uh, again, is it running? Ah, I have to create it. Ah, it's meeting now. So for some reason, uh, when it stops meeting, I don't see it because I probably have to update my R Studio. I don't see it directly as I see other things here. Yeah, it, something strange appeared there. I think I have to up, uh, upload, yeah, get the newest version. I didn't want it to do it just before um, our meetup because I have been trying all these things already, but I can open it here. And this is how the sharing and presentation looks like. And you can see how they do all these, these different things um, in, the, in the template because this was done from the template. So, yeah, just to... Have a look. Actually, I did the presentation using this, so you will probably find it very similar to the presentation we are looking at right now. Um, yeah, I mean, every new slide will be these three scores, and any new part in the slides will be these two scores. There are different, um, so there are actually different um, highlight styles and highlight, line, highlight lines and themes you can use. 
And what is nice is that there is one other ladies team. Maybe I can um, see if my presentation is open here. Uh, I can open it here, it's just the last thing. Um, so this is the presentation we are looking right now. And what is nice, is not this, no. Or is it, ah yeah, is it this, it's this. And what you can see is that there are already default CSS I, I mentioned it before, so it's like the way of defining the styles when the, the, the style is not already um, as a default defined. And there are some CSS that you can upload that are already created, and there is one um, style for our ladies. So that's why actually I decided to use Sharingan. I like the idea that there is already a default for our ladies. Um, so, okay, I guess, yeah, you, you need uh, for, yeah. I mean, to create uh, the presentation exactly as you do with our markup. So, well, I think these are the topics we wanted to cover. Uh, again, are there any questions? I will, I, will, I also want to show you the resources we have, um, or I, we have used to do this uh, meetup so that you can access them also. Um, are there any questions? Again, I need some feedback to know that people is there. <laughs> uh, so far, nothing. Okay. Well, that was really good. I have a question for you, uh, Anita. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, maybe it was just a tiny bit fast for me, but could you show me again where you make the multiple PDF reports? It's, yeah. Did you do that just from a plain R script, not from a markdown? Yeah, I'll go back there then. Um, so actually, there are two things that I need to have to do that. So I need to have an R markdown that will be needed many times, will be needed many times. So now I have to find because I have a lot of files, but um, I have the, so it's the, I, I name it automatic test. So I have an R markdown automatic test and an R script automatic test. The, the markdown is just where I create my markdown, right? The thing is that I want this markdown to be need it for different data, right? So what I say is, okay, I include a parameter that will be changed each time I need the markdown, right? And that's why I have to put it in the YAML here because it will be different each time I run this markdown file. So it cannot be signed here, but because whatever is inside the markdown text and code will be always the same. The only thing I can change is like the parameters I put in there so that I feed, oh, okay. mm -hmm. yeah? And then, so this is the markdown. This will run with the default value for group, which is one. But now I have group two, group three, group four, and I want to run this, to need the same markdown, but changing this. And if you have two groups, so I could just change it manually, but maybe you have, I don't know, 50 groups, or I don't know, or maybe you are preparing, every month you have to prepare like a weather summary and then this will save you a lot of time, for example. And then I go to, so that was the, that this is the R markdown, but then I have the R script. And the important part here, so the first part of the script is just creating the data, the fake data, so it doesn't matter. But the important thing here is that I have this function, which is actually like, uh, like when I just push the need button, but instead of, of pushing the need button, I just, use a function to do that, which is this render function from the package R markdown. And then I said, okay, you, it has different um, parameters, this function. One is, okay, which R markdown will be, will be needed. This is a markdown I just showed you, this automated markdown is just this file. And then, the which are the parameters? And so the parameters are a list and actually, what is inside this list has to match what is here. So actually, in my in the list of otherwise it will raise an error. So I will go back to here. So actually, you see that I have a list, and inside my list is the variable group. And here parameters will be a list, and we'll expect this variable group, and this has to match. But then I will this. The, the value inside this variable group will be changing and will be changing inside this for loop. So 
each time this for loops goes, um, this this will be changed. So I will be knitting my R markdown, but with a different value for my parameter that is fitted into this other um, file. And then at the end, I will also create an output file. I need to, to define a name for the output file. And I will also use this uh, I that is changing inside the loop to name the different files differently. Is that more clear? <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. Now, yeah, now yeah. I really understand it. Thank you. Yeah, maybe I went a bit fast on that. And it's not so easy. Um, yeah, I show it very quickly. Yeah, now it's clear. Thanks. OK. Anything else? Um, yeah, I just had a super small question. So I was yeah. um, trying to run the file called Markdown Workshop. I think it's Divya's uh, Tidy Tuesday uh, Markdown file. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting an error which says library game of thrones not found. And I'm kind of trying to find it on CRAN also. But I can't really find it. I mean, uh, Anyway, I could, uh, oh, uh, the library is actually called Game of Thrones. Um, let me just check quickly. On Cran, uh, on Cran, or maybe my yeah, on Cran. Just... I think I downloaded it directly from Cran. I'm just gonna check quickly. But if not, I'm just sending you the um, GitHub link as well. Awesome. I'm still sharing my screen. <laughs> yeah. uh, also, uh, the sources. Um, I mean, should I just write this, or will you, uh, or is this accessible on 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 your GitHub account? Um, the, the slide Everything will be available on our GitHub account um, right. soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not yet, okay, but will be probably yeah the next days. We usually yeah. to if there are any changes or we usually see typos or things. So people ask something and then we can change it before we upload it. But, yeah. yeah. Um. So last thing I just want to quickly show you so the some resources. Um, so this is already, we saw it, the cheat sheet for our markdown. This is a very nice um, book that is also do done with our markdown, that's done with something called Bookdown, and it has like, everything we talk, and it has our markdown, the definitive, definitive, definitive guide, and it has a lot of, yeah, really like a lot of things to play with and to, yeah, and to change. Um, then, um, well, this is, some nice uh, blog post that I used to prepare the automating report um, part. So if you are interested on it, you can have a look at that, the automating report. And then this is the, um, the presentation and the, um, and the video from the Our Ladies Oslo meetup, because if you see it, you will see that some things are quite similar. Um, and then also like the one guy to sharing and so for the, present, the last presentations that I showed. Uh, well, and I guess with that, I mean, at least we cover everything that we wanted to cover. And now there are some time, there is some time for questions and other things. Are there more questions? Um, we can, or I can stop uh, recording. Recording. Yeah, so I will stop recording right now so that we can have like some, yeah, moment where we can ask whatever we want. <laughs> some informal time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so.